All right, this is going to be the lo-fi. Not that the other version was hi-fi, but this is going to be the the new format for my channel for a little while at least. Uh, Happy New Year's Day. I was just sort of playing the YouTube version, but I didn't want to get the whole copyright infringement thing, so, you know, sort of mangle it up a little bit. Playing it with my... <clears throat> I don't know, rat type parts caster uh, using, you know, I have a million pedals and I have, you know, access to anything I want to use. But meanwhile, I'm using my Boss GT1 pedal with my Muff Fuzz patch and uh, the Boss Cube practice app, which is sort of like my couch rig, which I use while pretending to watch football games if I'm in the living room here watching some games. It is finally sunny out. Um, I've been battling a some sort of like sinus infection, ear infection, so um, I'll probably take a little break here and there, like right now, and go get a cup of coffee or make one. I'm almost tempted to take the camera with me and see how that goes but um maybe next time i'll do a here's how tony makes coffee kind of thing be right back i mean it says it's on oh okay cool all right all right so we can cut that out um okay back again i'll probably do like some editing maybe not much let's see let's go back over this way this is probably better so yeah, this is going to be um, a, as it was, a work in progress. I think I skipped most of last year. I was just sort of, um, you know, maybe not interested. Excuse me. Um, so why am I doing this again? Why am I? Why am I? Why am I rebooting the channel? Yeah, it's that this. This ear infection thing or sinus infection thing is driving me crazy because it's like I hear myself um, even more in a more effed up way than I usually hear myself. Uh, I'm going to balance this out, try and keep this, try and keep it rolling. Uh, so it's New Year's Day. I'm going to kick this going, kick this into gear and um, go over a bunch of things. I got Maybe I needed to accumulate some topics, maybe some things to think about. I've been watching a fair amount of other channels, but mostly not music related, I will admit. Um, mostly camera related. I'm really into photography, as some people know. Um, I'm really into guitar pedals and guitar tones and um, that things of that nature. But one thing that's driving me crazy about YouTube, which I ref I'm going to go against the grain is you're not going to see any sort of uh, fancy um, sizzle reels and you know music in the background. I mean, if I see one more film or photo YouTube guy with down tempo, chill, trip hop music in the background while I'm looking at his photographs, I think I'll vomit. I just turn the sound off and check out the photos, check out the cameras. Um, so I'm trying to avoid doing that to anyone who's watching this. So fear not, you will not hear me say like, you know, the big intro thing, like today I'm gonna talk about how to tune vocals. Let's get into it. And then it takes three minutes to get into it because it's all like a big bait to try and get you to hang out and stay longer. Let me get my coffee. I am drinking some some of Kirkland's finest, Costco. Uh, usually by this time of the day, which is 12.30 on New Year's Day. Usually by this time of the day, I'm into... I've finished the early morning pot of coffee, which is... 
maybe a two cup situation from the from the Cuisinart, and that's my fresh ground stuff, my fresh ground Kirkland. Um, and then I'll go about my business, go about getting my day going, and usually around 12, 30, 1 o'clock, sometimes I try and push it to 2, um, then I'll hit the K-cup thing. I'm trying to avoid doing too many K-cups because I don't want to pollute the entire planet with 9,000 K-cups you know, from me. Excuse me. So, New Year's Eve. Did you do anything crazy? I didn't. Um, I watched a bunch of football yesterday, which as, which usually means if I'm watching football and if I watch a bunch, that means I played guitar for, I don't know, six or seven hours if I was watching as I do, which is sound off because I cannot handle someone telling me over and over again, exactly what I just saw happened. Um, you know, tell me all the nitty gritty about like, well, you know, and he threw the ball to this guy and he caught it and, um, and then he stepped out of bounds. Yeah, I, I've been watching the television. I'm not listening on the radio. So anyway, I turn off all the sound. I get into music. Sometimes I just have, just have music playing um, so I can just listen to tunes, um, whether that be with Spotify and headphones on or, um, or just, you know, out of the the stereo or, or my, out of my studio room, which I can hear pretty much throughout the apartment. Um, that covered my New Year's Eve, which I've been back, like I said, I've been fighting this little thing and I just didn't feel like going anywhere. I went out Friday night for a long, a long night. And um, so Friday night kind of trickled into Saturday. Saturday was, eh you know, a bunch of work I had to do and things like that. Get geared up to do this, maybe. Think about it. Um, I watched something interesting this morning. This would be, I'm going to go random. I'll be like all over the place, sort of like being on the phone with me. Um, I watched this inter this YouTube video this morning uh, about using limiters too much. And, you know, this is for the nerds out there, the, the audio nerds that might be watching. Um you know, guys talking about, oh, it's just killing music, that people are using limiters so much. The L2, the Waves L2 is the death of mu was the death of music. I mean, that's far from the death of music. It's the, it can be abused and trash audio and make it just super loud and abrasive. And, and you, most listeners wouldn't even know why, but, but if you turn it off, they would say like, wow, that sounds really different. Um, but anyway... Yeah, the four or five guys that they interviewed on there, which are somewhat well-known names in the industry that mix, um, I mean, they were all lying that that they're not using, they try and avoid using the limiter so much. I mean, because why are they lying? Because they don't want you know to know that that's what gets their clients amped up and that's what gets their, their clients excited. I mean, if you, unless you're mixing jazz or classical music and you send a, a client a mix back without any limiter on it, it to make it loud and in your face for lack of a better description, they're going to be like, what's wrong with my, what's wrong with my mix? I mean, you know, it sounds um, like I got to reach for the volume knob and turn it. It'd be like send, sending someone a cassette tape mix of a mix nowadays when everyone's sending a digital file. Uh, so anyway, I got a kick out of that because they're all lying. We all lie. Um, I just talked to someone about a mix last night and, and the vocal and, you know, or the piano, like how compressed is the piano? I was like, well, I mean, the piano's compressed maybe to, to tape, you know, to recording, um, in the channel that I'm mixing it on, there's probably a compressor. Actually, I know there's a compressor. There might be a little extra compressor on top of that, which is pseudo, pseudo limiting, but like not really limiting. Um, and then it hits the mix bus and then the mix bus will have compression and the mix bus will have limiting. Um, the mix bus will have EQ, the mix bus will have other things. And so is it an uncompressed piano? Hell no. Um, and then there's also the element of, you know, guys saying like, well, I don't record with compression, but they're using 
old analog gear. I mean, that, that stuff has a certain amount of gain reduction built into the, to the circuits, which is kind of like the sound everybody kind of likes um, about analog gear. So there's some gear stuff for you. Sip of coffee. Um, <clears throat> 2024, what do I think is going to happen? I think this is just me being a, you know, Nostradamus. I think it's going to be a, um, it's going to be a, a year of major chaos. I mean, I think the phone lifestyle and the election thing coming up and, uh, hmm, immigration stuff coming up. I mean, anybody that tells you here that we're not dealing with that it's doesn't even, it's not even noticeable that there's more people on the streets and more people in the subways who aren't just riding the subways. They're basically living there. Um, if they're not admitting to that, they're just lying. I mean, I know two people this year in New York City, two guys that got punched in the face for no reason by someone with mental health issues. I've been here over 35 years. I didn't know anybody up until then that ever got hit much less attacked or much less robbed or threatened or in some sort of weird thing. So I think 24 is going to get worse. I don't see, I don't see anything improving. Um, if you go out on the streets in Astoria, uh, especially man, I noticed yesterday I took my camera out for a little bit of a camera stroll and I said to myself, like, wow, if I'm taking a picture on the street, I have to wait a little bit to not have at least one, two, three, or four scooters in the shot because they're everywhere. These delivery dudes, God bless them, they work hard, but they're everywhere. They're on the sidewalks. They're going the wrong way down the street. They're going the wrong way on the sidewalk, even though they're not even supposed to be on the sidewalk, period. And it, it, you have to have your head on the proverbial swivel. You got to be like, okay, you know, where's this dude coming from? If you're going, I'll give you some advice. If you're going on a one-way street on the sidewalk, um, the opposite way of traffic, and you're on the sidewalk, look forward to a scooter, scooter slash, you know, powered cycle coming up behind you on the sidewalk because the guy rides the sidewalk the opposite way of traffic because he doesn't want to go, you know, all the way around the block on, in a one-way situation to make a delivery. So he'll just ride the damn sidewalk to get to the middle of the block and make his delivery. Now, there's old people popping out of their stoops. There's, there's people walking dogs. There's people walking, you know, babies and strollers. And these maniacs are literally just riding up on them without any, any, they don't, they don't toot the horn either. They don't go like, Hey, I'm coming. It's their streets. It's their sidewalks. And, uh, that's the way it's going to be. Um, if you think it's going to change, think again, if you're in New York city here. Um, but most people don't care. You know, they're just kind of like, Hey, I, I don't leave my apartment anyway. I, um, I called, I, I dial up DoorDash. I have my shit delivered. I don't even talk to the delivery guy when he drops it off the door because the tip is built in. So I could care less what he's doing out on the road. And then when they go to work, if they go to work, unless they work, you know, if they work from home, they don't get, care about the subways. They don't care about the streets. Um, and if they do, most of them are taking Uber. Um, and or Lyft or something like that. So they've d disconnected from that reality. Going crazy. I wonder how long I could go. Um, my goal is to try and make some longer form things. All right, so my next thing I'm gonna talk about is, is our podcasts in general. Um, I'm guilty of watching several here and there. Um, and this year I got YouTube premium at some point. I just couldn't take it anymore with the ads and the, you know, skip forward or whatever, skip ad. Just, I said, let me try YouTube premium. 
I'll never look back. I mean, I think it's 20 bucks a month. It literally saves you hours of your life um, as far as, and, and also just not being inundated with even more ads. Now there's a, now there's more ads in the, the actual YouTube videos because the content creators are running ads, you know, the, they'll, you'll, you'll start, you'll be watching the video and all of a sudden the guy will go like right into one of those things from like 1960 when the, the announcer would be talking about the baseball game and going like, and by the way, I love camel cigarettes. And, you know, in this case, it's like, by the way, I'm using Squarespace and, you know, use that to, to make your website and use the portfolio so you can sell photos just like I do. And I don't think anybody of these guys really sell photos, to be honest with you. But the podcast thing is so tired now. I mean, how many guys are, and women, are sitting there at a table with two Shure SM7s? Those are the microphones you see everywhere. I have one in the other room. I'll, I'll dig it out at some point. Um, two SM7s, the blue lighting, purple lighting, you know, maybe they'll have the obligatory neon sign over in the corner, which says like, you know, chase your dreams or uh, um, love your life or some shit like that. And then it's two people who think, I mean, the one person who's being interviewed thinks they're ultra important because they've been invited onto this podcast, YouTube podcast. And then the interviewer thinks that they're Charlie Rose. Um, and, it, and it's literally, I don't even know why some of these people waste their time with the interviews that they do. I mean, I see major stars go on YouTube channels that have, I don't know, 1,200 views or something like that. Like, is, is, are you just rolling the dice so that you could just possibly get as many clicks as possible anywhere? I mean, I feel like I could get anybody on my channel right now just about if I, you know, danced through a couple of uh, emails and invited them. Not going to happen. I'm not, I'm not doing it. I'm not doing uh, long form podcasts with guests anytime soon. I might do some, uh, maybe a lot, what are they, are they like a live chats or whatever, live streams. I might try some of that because that could be hilarious. And if it's the right amount of friends that are involved, I'll do it. Um, and talk about the same old thing. Speaking of the same old thing, I'm going to talk at length, probably somewhere during the next couple of weeks about the, the diary of Alicia Keys album that I recorded and mixed a lot of, uh, you know, listen, I, I did the whole freaking album. It was basically me, Alicia, Carrie brothers with a couple of assistant engineers and a bunch of musicians. And we celebrated the 20th anniversary of it, uh, December 1st, last, you know, in 2023. And with a big concert at Webster Hall, which I attended, um, somehow I got invited, uh, even though, like, you know, like I said, for all intents and purposes, three, four people worked on that record. Alicia, me, Carrie Brothers, some assistant engineers, including Anne, um, who was my assistant at the time, who people confused the hell out of as, you know, being the person that made that album. It was me recording basically everything, including all the vocals, Carrie Brothers, laying a lot of the beats, being there for a lot of the vocals and recording. Um, and, you know, 100% of the time was Alicia Keys in the room. So who else was there? I mean, once we were like sending songs off to be mixed and things like that, uh, which is a whole complicated part of the story. Um, then, of course, there were some other people involved. And, and then mastering, which I didn't attend mastering, but I was there that day because I was still recording. I was recording the intro to the album, which was called Harlem Nocturne. I was recording and editing that in Studio One, I believe, at the Hit Factory, while they were mastering the rest of the album on the fifth floor with Herb Powers. 
Fifth floor? Third floor. And um, during the making of that intro, which I don't remember if I, I, I think I recorded Alicia playing that piano, maybe there or maybe at, at Campo, I'm not sure. But Carrie said to me at one point, um, can you do something about that piano? Like make it do something crazy because like, you know, we don't want it to sound like just like a regular piano intro or whatever. So what I did was I, I mean, I was kind of scrambling because the album was essentially done. It needed to be handed in, in as soon as possible so they could add it to the mastering session. So I threw some reverse, um, and I think I used, I'm 99% sure I used the DigiDesign reverse auto suite thing, played around with that a bunch of times on the piano, and I added that underneath the real piano, the untreated piano, and then as the intro was going along where they wanted it to be crazier and crazier, what I basically did was like pull down the regular piano and bring up the reversed piano. And that's how that intro came about. Um, yeah, I got a little bit into it right there, but I will be getting into that, that project a little bit more, probably to sort of like purge it from my own system and my own brain um, and get it out there. I mean, I'm tired of people asking me stupid questions like, you know, uh, oh, you worked on that? You know, like, what, what do you mean, oh, you worked on that? It's like, I was the only one there 99% of the time with Alicia. It would be like just me and her in the room, recording, editing, you know, mixing. I was editing, quote unquote, Steve Jordan's drums for If I Ain't Got You. I was replacing his drum sounds, which we liked, with Kerry Brothers samples because Kerry wanted it to sound more like his programmed beat, but with Steve Jordan's feel. And so during that editing session, while I was replacing drums, old school style with like DigiDesign sound replacer, because we're talking 2003, that like the current stuff to replace drums was not available. Um, I was editing that when the power bumped and Alicia said, like what, well, the lights blinked and I said, oh, Oh, what's that? Oh, and then they went out. And Alicia said, did you save it? I was like, yeah, just a second ago. And that turned out to be the blackout of 2003. So we were not working for a couple of days and basically sleeping in the studio uh, in all different rooms while we were waiting for the power to come back on, which we thought was going to be just maybe an hour or two. And it turned out to be a couple of days. We left, we came back. Um, a lot of drama, major drama stuff. Um, more coffee, hold on a second. Get terrible sleep last night. Um, this could be a com completely terrible idea. Um, I don't know if I'm gonna to watch it back and see how bad of an idea it is or I'm just, if I'm just gonna put it up and go about my day. And my day, I don't even know what's, I think it's going to be a lot of guitar today. I have some mixes to clean up. I'm working on a project for a very intense classical piano player from Quebec. Uh, and that's going to entail some, some maybe some Asia, uh, maybe some China, Korea, uh, maybe some... I'm hoping Montenegro looks like it's in the picture and a couple other things. So I'll keep you somewhat posted on that. As usual, I will tell you about things um, when they're done and in the can, as, as we like to say in the biz. So I'm getting toast. I'm getting a little burnt out on this. Um, I talked about the guitar rig that I like to use. I'll probably, I'll give you a couple of shots of that. I'm, I'm into guitar pedals. I have a ton of them. Um, I'm lately addicted to the Big Muff by Electro Harmonics, and I have now, I have one, two, I basically have four versions of it right now. One being a, a, in pedal form, like a single pedal form, like tr tr traditional Electro Harmonics version. 
And then I have a couple in some multi-effects pedal like the Line 6 M9, the Boss GT1. The Boss GT1 is my little sleeper, um, like, Swiss Army knife. I mean, you know, people... It's not fancy enough for some guys. Maybe it's a little too fancy for others. I picked it up several years ago, and I love the thing. I mean, you could do anything with it. It's um, It's got all great sounds, great pedals... I noticed that these pedals, like say in the in the case of Boss, when they do a multi-pedal, the Boss versions of their versions of their Boss pedals sound better than their versions of other pedals. Basically, because they want you to go like, "Wow, I really like uh, the way that Boss blues driver sounds in my GT1. Maybe I need to buy a blues driver." I mean, it's logical. But, um, and then I have the Line 6 M9 as my other Swiss Army knife kind of thing. And that, all the Line 6 stuff is incredible. It has the four Line 6 um, big pedals. You know, the big green DL4, the purple MM4, the blue something 4, and then the gold one with all the distortions. That All four of those are in the M9. And you can use any kind of weird combination version of a, all different versions of all four of them at one time, if that makes sense. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll use the coffee as like my timer. When the coffee's done, the episode's done or the, yeah, this is kind of an episode. It's like, it's like a caffeine episode. Uh, so cover the guitar pedals cover the podcasts, uh, covered New York City a little bit. That was probably, a, I, most of it is, is not planned. I've thought about some of it. Most of it's not planned. Um, my other stuff is on my, my iPad here. Let me just look at um, on my YouTube stuff. You know, it's kind of funny to deal with YouTube. Uh, like I said, I'm into cameras. I watch a lot of camera stuff on YouTube because it's somewhat relaxing to see somebody running around. I don't need to see another person take a photograph of an old um, antique gas station in the middle of the desert anymore with the down tempo music. I mean, I think I think we're all good on that. Uh, I don't need to see another guy loading up film in a film camera because, like, I think we have seen that enough. Maybe if you've watched enough of the videos that I have, it's like, okay, yeah, I get it. I mean, if I'm watching, if I'm watching this video, odds are I know what it looks like to see film get loaded into a film camera. Um, I don't need to see it 10 times in, well, 21 minutes, you know. But anyway, um, we got, um, let's see if anything jogs my memory. Oh, yeah, other music. I watched the documentary on um, The Ventures the other day, which is like the instrumental guitar group from the, I just watched it. I think they said the late 50s, if not early 60s, they started. And it started basically as innocent as possible. It was like, just, they wanted some, had something to do while they were doing their other job. These two guys that decided to go buy guitars from a pawn shop for 10 bucks a piece and learn guitar chords. And, um, and then they got the idea to go into the, to a studio to record it. And the mother was involved in that. She believed in that they should do this and have fun. The father wanted no part of it. Uh, the man, the mother became the manager and actually came up with the name of the ventures. And apparently they are like one of the biggest selling acts in the world as far as selling copies of, of music and they have over 220 albums it's a pretty wild documentary if you're if you're if you're bored out of your mind and you're a guitar player um watch the ventures documentary it's it's not done like incredibly well um and probably could have been excuse me a 45 minutes shorter than it is because they kind of 
stretch it out with all kinds of little quotes from different famous people like, oh, this is why the, the ventures were important to me. This is why the ventures, oh, the ventures, the ventures. Um, but the story itself, especially the first, I guess, hour is really fascinating. And I didn't know much about it. I always saw the, those albums everywhere you went. Like back when I was a kid, if you went to a department store or a record store, odds are you saw the ventures walk, don't run somewhere. Um, and then the Hawaii Five-O stuff and things like that. The Christmas stuff is kind of fun. Um, so the Ventures, I'm trying to think of anything else I've seen recently besides that that was fascinating. I was just watching this guy, Terry Reed, this morning. Um, British singer from the 60s. Apparently could have been in Led Zeppelin, but he turned it down. Uh, he turned down Jimmy Page. I didn't know much about him. Great singer. They call him a super long or something like that. Terry Reed. Uh, and that's about it. The coffee is getting low. Uh, do you find that you have to change brands every once in a while just for coffee to taste like coffee again? At a certain point, it just it's just something. It's just, you know, and then you switch it up. Even if you get a little Starbucks or a little... Uh, what's another, I mean, I never go to Dunkin' Donuts, but I, I'll try one of these cafes around here occasionally and, uh, you know, pay three forty-five for a 12 ounce coffee. And that'll usually convince me to go right back to my Kirkland stuff because if you cost average it, it's, uh, it's quite the bargain. And they deliver it to your house. A guy comes on a scooter. I never talk to him. No, I'm kidding. It comes by, uh, comes from the U.S. mail, I think, you know, USPS, they deliver it. Uh, I never go to Costco because they don't open early for some reason. They open at 10 here in, in Astoria. So BJ's opens up at 9, 8.30. That's the one I'll hit. I'll go there, do my thing, sneak in before all the mongrels get in there and out of there. And uh, Costco, I just order. This is... I hope this gives you a good idea of how crazy random this is going to be intentionally and not intentionally, because I don't want it to be like the 99,000 other YouTube channels where somebody's trying to sell you something. I'm not trying to sell you anything yet, uh, but we'll see where it goes. A couple more sips. I think it's cold enough today where it'll be quiet out there. So maybe I'll take a little, a little walk, take one of my cameras. I've been taking my, this, this Lumix, it's upside down, the Lumix GF1. But it ha I bought this uh, Leica 15 millimeter lens for it. And because this is a uh, micro four thirds, I guess the 15 millimeter is the equivalent of 30 millimeter, I guess. So it's got a really cool look to it. It's a fun camera to use. It's, it's pretty small and discreet. Um, the photos are, are good. I mean, it, it's like a 10 or 12 year old camera. I also got this other one, this Nikon D200. That might be the one I take out today because I'm trying out a, a vintage lens on it. We'll see. Uh, cameras, guitars, coffee, the state of New York, the obligatory Alicia Keys album chat, um, and uh, New Year's. You know, I played the, I played a little bit of New Year's Day. Um, let me see if I can. Sometimes I need my glasses for this. I don't have a pick. I wonder how it sounds. It... I don't think it's going to probably be audible because I have the, the microphone on. But that's the Big Muff, which I think was basically what he used, and the, um, the uh, Memory Man. So...
I have picks everywhere, of course. I don't have one within arm's reach right here. Unbelievable.